And today is a special service with emphasis of a major outreach of this ministry. This is to orphans and vulnerable children. And actually, the word that Pastor Swede and Carla got yes, I mean, uh, years ago is from James 1.27, that we have used it, used our faith to minister to the children, uh, orphans and vulnerable children. Listen to it from the Passion trans, uh, Translation. A true spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference. It's to make a difference. Say, to make a difference. Amen. To make a difference in the lives of the orphans and widows, in their troubles, and to refuse to be corrupted by the world's values. It's to make a difference in the lives of the orphans and widows in their troubles. Since our uh, uh, emphasis this Sunday is on uh, the orphans, not on the widows, so it's actually it's to make a difference in the lives of the orphans. And this ministry, close to 20 years, will be making a difference to the lives, uh, in the lives of the orphans. And James 1, 27, the same uh, scripture from the Amplified Bible says, pure and unblemished religion as it is expressed in outward acts. Pure and un unble unblemished uh, religion as it is expressed in outward acts in the sight of our God and Father is to, listen to this, to visit and look after the fatherless. To visit and look after the fatherless and the widows in their distress and to keep oneself uncontaminated by the secular world. Uh, you can tell then the secular world actually doesn't even care about fatherless, about widows. It doesn't. The vulnerable children, it doesn't care at all. The orphans and vulnerable children sometimes referred to the fatherless are in the heart of God and as believers in Christ, body of Christ worldwide, that we cannot ignore them. So you as an individual, we cannot ignore them. Through the scriptures, we see the heart of God towards them. When the children of Israel are getting ready to inherit the promised land, God gave them laws and commandments to Moses for them, for, for them on how to treat the needy how to treat the orphans, the fatherless, and the widows. He gave them specific instruction. And when you go to the uh, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, you, you find how much that he gave them commandments and laws regarding orphans, regarding orphans and the fatherless and widows. But again, I say our emphasis is on the fatherless or the orphans. And God is their defender. He is their defender. In other words, if anyone wants to experience the one who defends the, 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 the fatherless, then try to do anything uh, that is not right or that is not scriptural to the fatherless. In Exodus 22, 22 to 24, Exodus 22, 22 to 24, it says, you shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. And then he says this, if you afflict them in any way, now I don't want to get into such a place, do you? If you afflict them in any way and they cry at all to me, that's to God, I will surely hear their cry. And my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you with the sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. I don't want that. So, oh, we are not under the law. Hey, hey, people, the word of God doesn't change. He's the defender of, of the fatherless. And in Psalm 8, two, two, uh, 82, 1 to 4, from the Amplified Bible, it says this. God stands in the assembly of the representatives of God in the midst of the magistrate magistrates or judges he gives judgment as among the gods how long you magistrate listen how long will you magistrates magistrates or judges judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked and then he says the amplifier says Selah, 
A pause and come rethink of that. And then he says this. Do justice to the weak. Do justice to the poor. And fatherless. Maintain the rights of the afflicted and needy. Listen to this. Deliver the poor and needy. Rescue them out of the hand of the wicked. In other words, in every court of the land, justice should always be for the father. Of course, to everyone, but especially to the fatherless, to the widows, to the orphans. There has to always be justice. You can tell when laws are passed in our nation that do not favor the poor, needy, fatherless, orphans, uh, the land doesn't prosper. And you know what it does, actually, church? It opens a door to the demonic world. Every evil work coming in. And that's why you find that, uh, that people just don't, 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 don't even think call so-called professionals just to procure ab abortion. Kill babies. And make money out of that. I mean, I saw this past week of that clinic, and it felt like, why would anyone do that? I mean, just think of that. He's caught and caught a father of someone. And he's raising up children, supposedly, and he's killing babies, aborting babies. He just doesn't care about anyone except for his stomach. That's wickedness. That's no fear of God. I'm telling you, it becomes a church we need to stand in agreement to the word of God, even if it's your brother or your sister, and he's standing for a position in parliament, and he is pro-abortion. You need just to say no. Tell him, my brother, I love you, but I will not support you in your wickedness. Thank you for your enthusiasm, but I'd rather stand for God than stand for a wicked brother, or a wicked sister, or a wicked uncle. Seems like I'm alone in this. <laughs> oh, our country, Kenya. We need help. Amen? We need to stand in faith and believe God for our nation all the time. That's why we are commanded to pray for the president, to pray for all those in authority, according to First Timothy Chapter 2 from verse 1. We do desire to expand this vision that we may touch many more children in our generation. I have seen this vision develop in the past, uh, in close to 20 years now. If you ask Pastor Carl about orphans and vulnerable children, she has a lot to say. And that was, I mean, uh, if there's any work that I have done in this ministry, you know, uh, going to Buddha Lange, driving and, and going over there almost, almost actually after every week going and doing the work and overall, I mean that sometimes was even more very tough. I'm having to travel and come back and preach and all that was now dealing with orphans and vulnerable children. Why is that so? Actually our income, the income of Living Faith Victory Faith Church, the high percentage of it goes towards that goes to us, uh, the, the budget for our home child care center and, and, for, and uh, for HLA, Heritage Leadership Academy. It's a huge budget. But God has helped us. Amen. And God has blessed us in so many ways that, that actually we're getting ready, were it not for several things with the, with the you know, what, what has been happening, especially from March of kind of a ghost law in offices. Actually, you could have had now the three classes uh, probably complete by now or completing them. We're building three more classes for a Heritage Leadership Academy. And how we grateful we are to God for enabling us to, go, to, to be able to do this. But this past week, I think two weeks, uh, last week but one, the, the, the drawings, you know, went through our process in the city council. We got the staff, uh, the the county government, we got the stamp, and now we are going towards the, the actual, the latter stages that we may be able to start the work. So soon you'll be seeing the work here of building the three classes as we keep making progress. So actually, the Lord has helped us, and he has been gracious to us. 
Hallelujah. Yes, you can give him praise and glory. Pastor Carlos desire is to do more. And as our desire, uh, you know, you are of the vision. It's for us to be able to do more and to continue growing this vision through our generous participation, which actually is happening. About two years ago, we started our friends of our home, you know, members here from the church giving to us, to us the children's home. And I'm telling you, to every one of you that I have done this and has been participating, every gift has been so precious and of tremendous help to us in our weekly budget and a monthly budget. And I can say from Pastor Carl and I and from all the leadership, as from the Lord to you, thank you so much. The Lord multiply your seed sown and bring so much blessing upon your life that as he says in his word, you'll have no room enough to receive it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That has made a tremendous difference in our today, day to day running of the home. And recently, on 1st to 8th of September, I led a, a, a team to Mount Kilimanjaro, and I have to emphasize this to the peak. You understand? That's very important. And I have to emphasize this to Uhuru Peak. Uhuru is the highest. All right? You know, you can go to Mount Kilimanjaro Lodge. Say, I went to Kilimanjaro. Okay, you can go to a lot talk talk and see it and say, I went around Kilimanjaro. But I tell you something, we went to the mountain. We went to the peak. We went up against all odds, actually, to raise up funds for Heritage Leadership Academy, a school, you know, targeting orphans and vulnerable children, and for our home child care center. And this was glorious. Let me say this. This, there is a good fruit of it, regardless of being in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, because which made it look like we are not going to take the trip. You know, initially, we were supposed to have gone in June, and then things changed the way they had changed, but we set it up for, for, for September, and the closer we became, they looked like we are, going to go, we are not going to go to the mountain, but God... Hallelujah. He helped us. We went to the mountain. And we just didn't go to the mountain. But money came in. Yes. Hallelujah. It's another thing to go to the mountain. But it's a wonderful thing to go. And money coming in towards the vision. And Pastor Carla is so thrilled. I spoke to her, I think, on Friday night. He's so thrilled about it. And actually called it a barrier-breaking expedition. And, oh, my goodness. Oh, financially, actually, we are, I'm going to call uh, Deacon Yvonne and, in a short while to be able to give you some report regarding us. But actually, it's the highest we've ever raised in, you know, in any mega fest uh, outreach for the past. We started, actually, that vision of, uh, we used to call it a Walk for Life in 2007. I think the first one we had it in 2007. But up to this time, this is the highest that you have raised. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, how much I appreciate every one of you, every seed, we are church members sowing to, towards this. Uh, you know, I like it when I saw uh, Kili 2020 pastor. That means it was coming to me. If you saw Kili 2020 Duncan, it was going to us, Duncan. Because every one of us, you know, uh, we, we have set a, set a target. You know, a target pushes you up, uh, pushes you to be able to do something. So without a target, you don't know what you are aiming at. But we have set up a target for everyone to raise a, a half a million shillings. So if you saw, any time I was told there was Kili 2020 pastor, I rejoiced. I rejoiced more, but I also rejoiced when I had Kili 2020 Yvonne. And the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, uh, Deacon Yvonne, if you please can come up, and then uh, I will again be joining you and finish up some things that I want to minister to you. Would you give the Lord praise and glory? <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is good, and his mercy 
endures forever. Please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor Davis. Good morning, church. I hope we are all waxing great. Did we forget that? So I will just, Pastor Davis literally said most of what I was going to say. <laughs> I think he had some leakage on a lot of what I was going to say. So, but I'll just speak from my heart on the ministry that uh, Pastor Davis is talking about to orphan and vulnerable children. As he said, this ministry constitutes the highest expenditure, the highest expenditure line for these ministries. Because our outreaches to orphan and vulnerable children embody the very vision that we believe in, which is loving others first. Right? Have we forgotten? Yes. So because of this, this is a dear ministry to, to the pastors, Pastor Carl and Pastor Davis, and we see that even in the way we, we commit our resources. So Pastor Davis has already talked about Friends of Our Home. Just to give clarity, it is a partnership that is open to anyone in this church, individuals, and we've seen couples also signing up, where you commit to give a, a gift monthly, quarterly, or annually. This goes to the day-to-day -day running of our home and also the HLA. So this was launched about three years ago, and as Pastor said, has gone a long way in undertaking, helping us undertake the budget of the running of the home. So we have had several of us, of us participating, which has been a, a great blessing. And in our home child care currently, uh, Elder Ruth told me we are supporting 53 children. We undertake everything, shelter, food, accommodation, everything, the way we take care of our children in our homes. And a further 30 children from the Marui slums are taken, uh, they have full sponsorship to Heritage Leadership Academy. From here, they get a wholesome education. I hope you have seen the kind of facilities that they are given. It's not just any kawaida one, right? It's good, good, uh, good education. And they also get meals. You know, some of these children don't eat. They come to, they come to school hungry. And they get an opportunity to eat good food. And we, we know that because of this uh, seed that we sow in their lives, we are giving them a chance, an opportunity to make a difference in their communities as they grow up. They will not be the same as uh, their parents or their grandparents, but they have an advantage because they are being given a Christian education. So we really thank you for participating in this. Now, these uh, Friends of Home Partnership currently runs from September, sorry, from 1st of October every year to September of the next year. However, at this stage, you want to make a slight adjustment to that partnership cycle. I know this will help a lot of us, me included. We want to make the partnership cycle run from January to December of every year. I'm sure this will be easier for us. New Year's resolutions, you know, when we start for the new year. So we invite you to prayerfully consider being part of Friends of Our Home from January 2021. And for those of us who are already in this co commitment, please, we ask you to renew your commitment come January, and we invite as many of you as are able to participate in Friends of Our Home. So Friends of Our Home will be running from January to December every year. So we will uh, launch the Friends of Our Home Partnership 2021 early in the year, sorry, early in uh, 2021. So just for you to be praying and believe to be part of this, outreach. Now, pastors talked about Megafest. Okay, called it Work for Life. In 2012, we rebranded it to Megafest, Megafest 360. And I'm sure we are all familiar, those of us who come to this church are all familiar with Megafest 360. So th this is just in keeping with the vision of loving others first. Usually every year we come together as a church. We have fun, we have fellowship, we jump, we sing, we dance. We have uh, Brother Jeffy who talks about Rasmatas. It, it, it's a time for fun, but there's the, the overall vision that we have, that we are coming together as a community to mobilize funds towards our home and HLA. So this is a community partnership program, and through it we obtain uh, support to, uh, through our networks, our family, our friends, the organizations we work for or we are affiliated with, because we go out to them those of us who prefer to use forms, have forms. Those of us who would like corporate letters, get that. Those of us who would like us to go with them to a, an organization and just talk about this vision, we do that during this period. So uh, we'd like to announce today that Megafest 2020 is still open. It's not over. 
yeah? It, it's not closed because of uh, COVID, right? So this opportunity for our, to activate our community partnerships is open. And for those of us who'd like to get a, a form, a fundraising form, or get a letter to a corporate, kindly see me after the service. At the, I'll be at the registration. We will avail this to you from next Sunday. So if you'd like to participate in this way, kindly see me after the service at the registration desk. We will also let you know within the next few weeks we'll, if we'll have the the event itself, it's usually in the first Saturday of December. However, due to the current restrictions, we cannot confirm if we'll have that event or not. So please be believing that there is a lifting of these restrictions and that this situation eases and that the, the virus disappears as fast as it came. It's lingered around, but it's gonna disappear. So we will confirm within the next few weeks if we will have the event itself. However, the community activation, the partnerships that we seek to establish with our communities, that is open. So please see me at the registration desk if you'd like to participate in this. Now, I would like to ask the Kilimanjaro team to join me on stage for the next part of this. Can you please appreciate them? Plus Eldaru. Welcome. They, they, they now, they look uh, normal, eh? <laughs> it was quite something. My recovery took quite a bit, but I thank God. I, I wanted uh, Yvonne, uh, Lillian, Oculus to go up and, and uh, Mary, and she had put down a down payment, actually, which was a required of 50,000 shillings, but for several reasons then she couldn't be able to go up, but that was our participation and our faith. And she went out several times going up to the mountain and married just at the last minute. She didn't, uh, there are several challenges that she went, to go, she went through physically and she didn't make it. But you know what Mary did? She made sure that the 500,000 shillings came in through her. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Pastor, for that clarification. Because the two of them were not with us during the time that we were presented. Sam is also not here today. But this and was Norman. the team. And, and Norman, Norman, is in Norman is in the transition class. But this is the team that took a huge leap of faith. I would say that because when, when, it was, when we stood here, Pastor Davis, through Pastor Davis and even us to our network, saying that we are going to Kilimanjaro, I must admit, some of us doubted. I'm like, okay, I'm saying it. But um, I really don't know. Because we were not, not only were we not allowed to leave Nairobi. You know we were not allowed to leave Nairobi at that point. We, the airspace was closed. The borders were closed. And Pastor was saying, we are going to the mountain. So we were saying, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. But to cut the long story short, Kilimanjaro happened. We thank God for that. Against all odds, Hallelujah. we went and we got to them to the peak. Uh, and Pastor Davis was a real encouragement. You know, you, you need that positive energy. When you're doubting, he was a real encouragement and we used to go for expeditions, <laughs> Alex, <laughs> pushing us. And this just caused our faith to be stirred up. And I would say, you know, they've been told 20, 2020 is our year of supernatural increase. For most of us here, this increase was in our faith. Yeah? We were speaking, you know, it didn't seem like it was going to happen, but we experienced increase even in our faith as individuals. Yeah. So as Pastor said, in the, in the 2007-13 year uh, history of Megafest, we had a barrier-breaking fundraising and reached a new all-time, as he has said. This is especially significant because the situation around us spoke, you know, Negative. It is not possible. It cannot happen. And I'm sure all of us got interesting comments, questions, you know, Th those uncomfortable questions like, y you guys, are you really serious? Are you going to leave this country? And I'm so thankful when I was thinking about this, that that word of supernatural increase came early in the year, before anything, we'd seen anything happening, right? The COVID situation. And so that was our lifeline. We believe that this is a year of supernatural increase against all odds. And today we stand here as witness to that word, that it's true. 
2020 is indeed our year of financial increase. And this is just one of the manifestations through Megafest and, and through Kili 2020 that we have seen God come through and we have seen increase. I am sure we are curious to know what barriers we broke. Eh? Who, who wants to know? You want to clap for us? We go. <laughs> drum rolls. Do we have drum rolls? Do we have? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And you should be clapping. It's good news. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, this year as part of uh, Megafest 2020, and I'd like Deacon Duncan to help me do this, I invite Ms. Tina and Elder Ruth as representatives of our Home Child Care Center and Heritage Leadership Academy. We'd like to present this to you in the absence of Pastor Carla. Pastor Carla, when you're watching, this yes, is for you. This is for you. <laughs> So the Kilimanjaro expedition raised a total, you need to hear this, eh? Four million, <laughs> 50,035 shillings. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Four million. Thank you. Thank you. This is indeed supernatural. It represents 70% increase from last year. Last year when everything was normal, 70%, 70% yeah. growth, close to 100%. I know by the end of the year we will get to over 100% growth in this year. Isn't that God? It is. Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. On, on behalf of the team, I would really like to thank you. Because this congregation was one of our biggest supports. Biggest support. Yeah, exactly. Fundraising and in prayer. Yeah? Because you are our cloud of witnesses urging us on. We really needed that support. And we thank you. We rejoice that you raised four million, but you know, a big part of it came from you. And thank you for yeah, that. It's true. Yeah. I, I I told you we had even one church member giving uh, 500,000 towards this. I think about two or three weeks ago, just saw it. I see. He said, Pastor, we all, with your team, we challenged me going up to Mount Kilimanjaro, and I want to sow my seed. And he brought in a check of 500,000 for this. Yeah. We are grateful. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Over back to you. So, so before I give Elder Ruth an opportunity to say thank you, I would just... Uh, like to conclude by saying that the ministry to these orphaned and vulnerable children continues, right? We still have these children, and we know there is room for more. We can do more. We can reach more children, and that is why we urge your participation through Friends of Our Home and through Megafest, and in any other way that you can to support this ministry, as Pastor uh, Davis has read to us. It's dear to the heart of God. So this is something that you're doing in direct obedience to what God has uh, told us to do. So we ask you to participate. Do not let this opportunity pass you by. So please sign up for Friends of Our Home in 2021, January, and Megafest 2020 as we round this up to 10 million perhaps. Yes, <laughs> this is just the start. We can raise 10 million, so please join us and participate. And we don't know yet if next year we'll be going to Mount Kilimanjaro. Yes. But we're praying. And not only praying, that, that part of Mount Kilimanjaro, you just don't only pray, but you exercise. Mm -hmm. You get yourself ready. And I want, before Miss Ruth takes it up, I want us to pray, church. Just lift up your hands. You can stand up. We just want to thank God for this. This is... And... and, and this is such a significant seed. And then what, what uh, uh, Deacon Yvonne has said concerning 70% increase, so then being supernatural increase, let us anticipate this. Barrier breaking in your own life. Ba barrier, barrier has been removed. Anything that has been a limitation in your life been removed. Listen, you are a believer. You have a covenant with God, COVID-19 does not have a covenant with God. It's cast. So whatever it has brought in, 
We, we have authority over it in the name of Jesus. We have authority over everything that the enemy has stolen through this. And we take our joy. Father, we are so grateful. We are grateful to you for every seed, every coin, every shilling, every, every amount that has come in, Father, through this expedition. Father, I remember telling you, and I'm go, I was going up to that mountain, I said, Lord, you know how I'm feeling. I'm going to give you every ounce of praise and glory because you are strength. And therefore, every single coin that has come is four million plus. Father, we give glory to you. We give you thanksgiving and praise that you are a barrier-breaking God. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And Father, thank you in this ministry. We say this year, the barriers are removed. Barriers are removed. Limitations are removed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we speak even a fresh beginning in your people's lives. I say that over them. I proclaim that over them. This is an anointing that has done this. For it is you who gives us power to get wealth. It's you who have enabled us to do this. So this anointing, even upon this expedition and came upon this team and upon this church, I release it over your life in the name of Jesus. I release this barrier-breaking anointing upon you Barrier-breaking anointing over your life. Breakthroughs upon your life in the name of Jesus. I say it and I proclaim it. That every limitation that has existed. I'm telling you, I sense that anointing right now. Every limitation that has existed. Every limitation that has been brought in by this COVID-19 upon your life. I break is power now in the name of Jesus. I speak the blessing of God. I speak the supernatural breakthrough. I speak breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. For the year is not over yet. The year is not over yet. So rejoice. In the goodness of the Lord. Rejoice in His goodness. Hallelujah. He's able to do much more in one minute. than all efforts of years and decades and decades cannot produce. Because He's God. And we release you, your power and your ability upon this congregation, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I wrote a, a thank you letter because you know I can be dramatic so that I can stay within. And uh, to the Kili family, on behalf of Pastor Carla, Pastor Davis, who happens to belong to your family, and all of us at our home, I want to express our heartfelt gratitude for your amazing generosity. Because you have a generous heart, you are able to hear and obey the voice of God. You employed great faith, determination, and made huge sacrifices to produce the supernatural increase even in the wake of much uncertainty. The funds you have raised are so precious because they will help us continue giving life to the 53 orphaned and vulnerable children and the 30 other children at, at HLA. Uh, we shall use the funds at our home to give the children a holistic quality life, shelter, food, education, clothing, medical, etc. Our projected budget for 2021 
to cover the home operations and the education of both our children's home and HLA is amounting to 23 million shillings for 2021. I've just completed uh, the budget. We thank the Kili family for slicing a pie of that budget and we are in faith that our God will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I take this opportunity to thank you, the Victory Faith Congregation, the, uh, those of you who may, uh, uh, who may not have gone to the summit, but you said amen in your hearts and supported the Keeley family with your seed and prayer. Thank you also to all friends of our home partners. You have so much simplified our grocery shopping. I tell you that. You have so much simplified our budgeting every month. Thank you, those of you who give through other avenues. You may not have signed to the friends of our home, but there are many of you who sow to us uh, physical food, you bring clothing, some of you even books, and many other general items. There are a couple of um, uh, people here who keep uh, bringing us cleaning pro uh, products and many other things. And therefore, for all that you have been giving to our home and to HLA, we want to offer thanksgiving to God for that. Uh, Psalms 112 is the scripture I want to speak over all of you who have generously been giving to our, our home and HLA. It's uh, in the Passion Translation, Psalms 112, verse 5, 6, and 9 says, Life is good for the one who is generous and charitable, conducting affairs with honesty and truth. Their circumstances will never shake them, and others will never forget their example. Never st stingy and always generous to those in need. Their lives of influence and honor will never be forgotten, for they were full of good deeds. So my ending statement is this. May you be influential, honored, and never be forgotten for generations eternally. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's so good. Now, Kilimanjaro, you know, team members, you know, you are so special to me. I hope you'll be joining me again. But I'm telling you, you got to know each other better than just coming here on Sunday and going through what you went through together. Thank you. I really do appreciate. I am so excited for, you know, in hiking until just on Tuesday, during Mashuja Day, we have just few of us who want to go to Abadea again. La, la, what do you call it? Elephant Hill, which is uh, about 3,900 meters above, I think 3,800. And I'm excited because it flows in this body. <laughs> Thank you, people. Thank you, team. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deacon Yvonne and Miss Ruth. And... <laughs> Hallelujah. This is special, special to the Lord, and special to us. Let me share with you some of the things, rewards of sowing to the fatherless or to the needy. Uh, as you wind up this service, I told you this is going to be different. Um, in Psalm 68, verse 5, 6 to 6, uh, Psalm 68, it says this, He's a father to the fatherless. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God. Just think about that. That's wonderful. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God. Whose dwelling is holy, God places the lonely in families. That's really wonderful. As a, as a, as a believer in Christ, you know, bringing even children to your home. God places the lonely in families he sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. Thank God we choose not to be rebellious, but choose to be the righteous people who will pursue 
God's cause. And in, uh, in Psalm 41, 1 to 3, it says this. It sent it from the New Living Translation. It says, Oh, the joys, plural, the joys of those who are kind to the poor. Hallelujah. There is joy in doing it. The Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. I want that. No wonder this ministry is standing today and, and of all the things that uh, you know, we've gone through and Pastor Sir Wade and Carla went through and joined them and I know some, some you know, negativities try to come in and this ministry is still standing. And we shall all outlive it. If the Lord tarries, we shall all outlive it and it shall continue in the next generation. And he says this, all the joys of those who are kind to the poor, the Lord rescues them when they are in trouble. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. I want that. That's a reward. He gives them prosperity in the land and rescues them from their enemies. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. This is a psalm of David. The Lord nurses them when they are sick and restores them to health. And in Luke 14, 12 to 14, uh, Jesus had been invited and he was uh, in a banquet. Uh, there were Pharisees there. They were taking the best seats, you know, in, 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 in this banquet. And then he says, he says, it's from the Passion Translation, he says, uh, he, he, he talks to the host. He says this, it's better to invite those who never get an invitation. Invite the poor to your banquet, along with the outcast, the handicapped, and the blind, those who could never repay you, you repay you the favor. How many people do that? I want that. That you help people that you don't think, you know, we don't think like they're going to repay you. Because they can't. In their condition. But listen to this. Then you'll experience a great blessing in this life. And at the resurrection of the godly, you will receive a full reward. It goes to eternity. And then he says, this. then Jesus turned to his host and said, when you throw a banquet, don't just invite your friends, relatives, or rich neighbors. How many of you like inviting rich neighbors? For it is likely they will return the favor. But in Proverbs 19.17, kind of like in continuing this, in Proverbs 19.17 from the New Living Translation says this, if you help the poor, you are lending to the Lord and he will repay you. In other words, you don't have to wait for those friends, relatives, or rich neighbors to, to, to repay you. But if you are doing it, God says this, you are lending to him and he will repay you. And God can never take anything from you without returning it. And I know the nature of God. I know some of what, you know, it's been taught like, he'll just repay you like a shilling for shilling. I just don't believe that. Because that's not the nature of God. The nat nature of God is a generous God. In other words, if I'm going to give something to him, we, say, we see consistently in the scriptures, he just doesn't give you back what you have given to him. He says, good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, shall he cause that man to give unto your bosom? That's what he does. So he just doesn't repay you a dollar for a dollar or a shilling for a shilling. In Proverbs 28, verse 27, the the New Century Version, he says this, whoever gives to the poor will have everything he needs. Whoever gives to the poor will have everything he needs. But the one who ignores the poor will receive many curses. I don't want that. I'm telling you, I, I, think, I think as a church, when we rise up to, you know, to, to remove that oppression from people, and to be led by the Holy Spirit in exactly what you are supposed to do, we'll see more prosperity manifesting in the body of Christ than never before. Years ago, 
Oh, I'll never forget this. But I think this is before even that this incident happened. Uh, I was driving, you know, in Westlands. I came from the office, and then I found a certain woman who had been stuck, you know, you know uh, and asking for money. A small, she had a small vehicle. I'm forgetting what, maybe Starlet. You remember Toyota Starlet? You know, just a small vehicle. So then uh, I stopped. She was of an, you know, Asian descent. So I, I stopped, and she, you know, she was stopping. And she said she had run out of fuel, and she needed help and all that. Maybe she was in her 50s. You know, I think I was in my early 30s, so she looked such a mature woman. You know, just like when you are 15, 16, you think I'm old, and I'm not, actually. <laughs> you, you just, it's, it's a mistake you're making. I'm not old. But then uh, what I did, I gave, uh, I, I pulled out some money and gave to her. And then I don't know if it was weeks later or so, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. I saw someone posting on Facebook concerning this lady and took a photo of this lady and her vehicle, how she stands by the road and she says that she's run out of fuel and then she takes advantage of people because people give her money. And say, so this is a criminal, a con woman. I thought, Lord, she conned me. <laughs> she took my money. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what I thought. My goodness, how can, could I have been conned that easily? And, and actually, recent, last recent, I think some, uh, I don't know, maybe this year or it was the end of last year, I see, and that was maybe, maybe seven or eight, I'm not sure, years ago. I think over eight years ago, actually. But I saw recently, if not the beginning of this year or last year, I saw someone posting a, a something on Facebook, Regarding still that same lady, she's still doing it. Around Westlands and Parklands, she, she does that. I thought, Lord, so how will I know then how to be able to help people? Yeah? Because there are so many con people. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. If we listen to the Holy Spirit, he will tell us. Pastor, you didn't ask the Holy Ghost? No, I didn't. I helped her. Thought helped her. But listen, don't you know if, in fact, when I gave her the money, and I, I started telling about Jesus, oh, she went into the vehicle and drove off. Seriously, that's exactly what she did. She didn't want to hear anything else except to see that money getting into her hand. How will you know if you are helping someone who's genuine? Can I tell you first in this ministry? You'll saw here, and we'll do exactly that. And, and I'm telling you, and we have gone through a shift in several, several times. We have to go again to start finding out more information concerning individuals. But they, because there are every kind of people that appear like they have needs. If we ask the Lord for, for clarity and guidance, he will always lead us. He'll always lead us. And I want you as a believer in Christ just to believe that. Even in your day-to-day -day, uh, walk. Let me give you a scripture over here. It came up, uh, Tina and I were listening to something this morning in, in Hebrews. It is not part of my notes here. But listen to this in Hebrews 13, 1 and 2. Uh, it says this. The Passion Translation. No matter what, no matter what, Make room in your heart to love every believer. Have you re realized there are some believers that is not easy to love? I'm the only one who realized that. But how do you love people? By faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. Make, make, make room in your heart to love every believer. And listen to verse 2. And show hospitality to strangers. For they may be angels from God showing up as guests. Whoa, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Maybe entertaining angels. Uh, the, the, the New King James says, some have entertained angel, angels unwittingly or unknowingly. Identify with those who are in prison as though you are there suffering with them and those who are mistreated as if you could feel their pain. Church, you want to be that kind of people. It's so easy to be caught up with your own needs. You know, on what? I want this. I want this. I want this. I want. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. 
It can be just everything just for yourself. Listen, God has called out us to reach out to others through his love and through his faithfulness, uh, through his faithfulness upon our lives, and he always meets our needs. An amplified version of the same scripture in Proverbs 28, 27 says this, He who gives to the poor will not want. But he who hides his eyes from their want will have many a curse on the blessing of God. I want, I want and, and with, uh, with our desire that we be people that will always be a blessing to others, no matter what is going on. Hallelujah. I hope you received something this morning that you can go home with. And now, again, I'm grateful to every one of you for your support, your faith, praying for us as we went to Mount Kilimanjaro. Learned a lot of things, actually. A lot of things. And many times, I know they'll be coming out, even from my heart, in the future concerning things that we learned. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet, and so I call Brother Francis to come over. Just rise up on your feet, please. Thank you, Father. Let's thank him. Let's praise him for everything that is done in this service, for every breakthrough. Just lift up your hands, please, and just thank him. Brother Francis, if you can come over. Father, thank you again for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for the lives of your people. I speak your blessing over them. As I stand as a pastor, agreeing even as faith, we praying for these people, Pastor Carl and I and praying for these people, I speak the blessing of God upon you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. The Lord says, my people shall dwell in peaceful habitations. I speak the blessing of God upon your home. I speak the blessing of God upon everything that God has called you to do. And I thank you, Father, for supernatural provision into your people's lives. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.